Hey, and welcome back to another Animal Crossing tutorial. Today, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to start doing custom designs. And the first design we're going to work on together is Lattice. So I've done one before where we did a cute picnic blanket, and I figured I would love to do more of these because there's a lot of friends who may not have online or just want to learn how to do it on their own. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is open up our custom designs and we're just going to go over to the standard custom designs and go to one of the hopefully empty ones that we have now that we have extras and we will change this design. So to start any kind of design, I typically like to make sure I go into here and fill it out completely with the clear see-through. If you do not have the see-through bit, you will need to upgrade your design to the Designer Pro, which you can do in the Nook Mile shop. So next, let's go into the color palette. We're actually going to change all of our colors. So we will start with a nice kind of dark green. So probably somewhere around, let's, let's put that one here. We're gonna go from right to left as we go through these. So that'll be our super dark green. We're gonna pick something very similar to that, but just a little bit lighter and a little less blue. But we still want it pretty dark, just enough to notice a difference there. So we can see the color difference. They're pretty close to each other. Maybe we'll move this one over here and there. All right, next we'll go to a nice light green, more toward the yellow a little bit, probably around here. And you can put these kind of wherever you want really, but um, I just think that having kind of these nice desaturated greens will work really well. And this is gonna be the, the first two are gonna be the background wood. So we, I chose a green to kind of show that there's a lot of greenery and the, the light reflecting off of the green leaves are going to be on the backboards. So we'll do another green. I know what you're thinking. There's a lot of greens here, but they're all going to be used. So we'll pick a nice lighter green, make it brighter, probably somewhere around there. And then we'll do one last green over here. And this one will be kind of in between, like a little bit darker, but brighter than our other greens. So we're gonna saturate it a little bit more. Just like that. I think that's a little too bright. Let's make it a little bit darker, just like, so we have those three greens. Next, we're actually gonna do blue. So I'm gonna make some blue hydrangeas for this one. You can make the flower color, whatever you'd like. But we're gonna start with a nice light blue, kind of right in the middle of the darker blue and lighter blue, just like that. Maybe make it a little bit more saturated and we'll move on to this one. I'm gonna go more towards the purple a little bit with this one and kind of darken it. This one's actually kind of close to where I want it. I wanna make it nice and dark and maybe even desaturate it a little bit like that. Mm, let's make it a little bit brighter. We're gonna have this one be kind of an in-between. We'll let it be a little more on the purple side but just a smidge darker. This this color and this color are gonna be very close, but one is more purple and one is toward the blue, so. And then this one we'll put in the dark blue area and make it pretty, pretty vivid, but a lot less saturated, so it's a lot darker. Great, we're, we're doing good. So now we are gonna go and just desaturate almost all of this. We'll maybe put it toward the green a little, but we're gonna have it basically one away from the vividness. And we're just gonna tr like kind of trickle up the, up the brightness here. So we'll have it between the green and the blue. And this one will keep pretty dark. We'll move on to the next one to the left. Bring the vividness pretty much all the way down. Have it a little bit brighter and maybe a little more toward the red. Just like that and a smidge darker. Let's actually make this one even darker. So we kind of want a nice gradient going on. Okay, now we're gonna have one that's toward the red a little bit more again, but we're gonna bring the vividness all the way down. And probably pretty close to our previous one, just a little just tiny, tiny bit of a difference. And we can actually make this a little over this way too. You know what, let's let's make this one a bit brighter as well. Okay, so now we are moving on to this. We'll put it kind of in the yellowish green. Bring the vividness all the way, except for maybe one or two. And this will be a lot lighter, so we're gonna make it right about here. And one more. These three are basically gonna be all the way to the white, so we'll make that Super white. So we have a beautiful color palette here. Notice how the grays are all very different. Um, you can kind of tell there's like a little bit of a gradient to them, 
while still keeping it pretty pretty even across the board. So this is what we're gonna start with and let's start designing. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually fill this up with our nice second shade of green. So this one that's a little bit lighter and that's gonna be pretty vibrant to start. And then we'll move on to this and we're gonna start making some lines and it's a little hard to see. So if you wanted to start with the lines first, it might make it a little bit easier to see the lines there. So we'll go to the second green and we'll use our line tool and we're just gonna go across. So we wanna go down three, so one, two, three pixels and drag this all the way across. We're gonna have seven pixels in between each of these lines. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one more and we'll add another line. Do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in between. Go go down one more and go across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one more to go across. And now we should have five on this side. See how there's five down here? One, two, three, four, five, and two on the top. Six, seven. So when this is in a panel, it'll actually be completely even. And now we'll go to our darker color and fill in the in-betweens. Just like this. Looks great. So looking at this, I think I actually want to swap those two green colors. And the easiest way to do this is just to pick a lighter green, put it in between to hold that place for us. And fill these out with the darker ones. and fill this back with the other green. And you can adjust these to be whatever version you want. I think I'm gonna stick with this one instead. I think I like that a little bit more. So next we're gonna use our line tool again, but we're actually gonna pick the color that is probably about, I would say here, one of these two. Let's go with this nice dark one right here. And we are going to go from this top corner and just go diagonally across all the way down like this. And then from there, we're gonna pick our lighter one. So probably this one where it's pretty light. We're gonna grab this one, go all the way up, right next to the other one, like that. And we're gonna do this six more times. So two, three, four, five and six just like that so next we're going to go back to our color we're still going to use our line tool and we are going to put a white edge on the top line right here and now that we have this nice kind of guide where we can actually color pick these so we remember which color from here we're going to add another board and we're going to go eight across so one two three four five six seven eight and then one extra to make sure there's room for the shadow. That way there's eight in between. And we're gonna put our dark gray, color pick our lighter color here. And we're gonna go and put this middle board in here six times like the last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll get our white color for that top board like this. All right, excellent. So now we are going to take our white color and we're gonna go down the same way we did across. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're just going to go one more and bring it down diagonally like that. We'll go back to our other board color six more times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now with our last line, we'll put this under here. Looking good. And we just have to do this one more time for these diagonal boards. So one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Grab this one, like so, and we will go one, two, three, and four, like that. Just to make sure that they tile, let's go and grab this. And if you pull it down, you'll notice there's a little bit of a bend right here. So we can actually go in and fix that. And that's a really great way to see if your pieces are lining up, just like so. All right, we'll go back to our tile, grab it around, pull it down just to make sure it tiles okay. Pull it this way to make sure it tiles okay. And pull it diagonally just for fun. That looks great. So we're gonna kind of reset this back where it was. It was about here, right about there, perfect. Great, so we're gonna leave that there and we are going to move on to the other boards. So this might get a little confusing, so just bear with me and we'll count together to make sure that these are aligned pretty nicely. But we are going to make sure we don't have mirror mode on. We're gonna make boards going the opposite way, so they're gonna kind of overlap with each other. So what we are going to do is from this top left corner, we're gonna go over one, two, three, and on the fourth one we'll go across. And we're gonna make our diagonals just the way we did originally. But instead of using this color, we're actually gonna use this one instead. And you know what, we'll actually change this color to be a little bit lighter than our previous board. And this is something you'll be kind of doing on and off, trying to, trying to perfect the board colors and you can always change afterward. Just like that. So we're gonna go six across like we've been doing. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Actually, we want to go back by one because we want this white line on the fourth pixel. One, two, three, four, like this. And it's a little confusing to see, but we're gonna be adding some shadows afterward and that'll kind of separate the boards themselves. So you should have three pixels from the side, one, two, three, then the white, one, two, three, four, five, six of that other shade. We can grab this shadow color again that we were using earlier and just put it on the other edge of the board right here, just like that. We're gonna grab our white again and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus one. There should be three pixels from this middle line here. One, two, three, and then a fourth one, if that makes it easier. Bring it diagonally down, make sure the diagonal line is straight, and it should be three pixels from this center line here. One, two, three. All right, we're gonna do our six middle color of the boards. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. We'll take our shadow color, and that'll be the seventh. It should be on the sixth from the bottom, and bring it up like that. All right, for our next board, we'll take our white again. We'll go four from the top corner here. One, two, three, four, and then one additional one, five. And bring our diagonal across. And this one should be four from the left-hand side as well. One, two, three, four. We'll take our other middle of the board color and go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll take our shadow color again. And from this center line, it should be f on the fifth line over one, two, three, four, five. Just like that. We're almost done with these boards. Just stick with it. 
we'll get it together. So from this center line here, we're gonna go over four, one, two, three, four, and then one more, five. Put our white line diagonally up. And from, of course, this center line, it should be four spaces in between, one, two, three, four, and then one more, just like that. We will take our colors here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then this line should be on the fifth one in. One, two, three, four, five. Just like that. Great. So we're gonna take our move tool and just move it and make sure it is symmetrical, which it looks like it all lined up really well. Perfect. So we'll just put this back where it was, right about there. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit more shading onto the boards. So we're gonna go to our slightly darker color from this one, and we're gonna go one over, and we're just gonna go right up with our line tool and anywhere that it kind of shows this overlay right here, we can actually, let's make this one a little bit lighter. So we're gonna change this color, and this is something you're gonna do and experiment with the entire time. So don't feel like what you're doing is wrong because it happens all the time. So we're gonna grab this color, so it's slightly lighter than our other shadow, and we are going to put it along this edge like so. We don't want it to overlap with the board itself, so we're just gonna put it right there. One right here, like that. Here, so there should be three pixels each time. Here, one right here, one right here. Three here, three here. Two and two. Awesome. Doesn't that look really nice? You can definitely tell there's like this cool kind of depth to the boards now. So the other thing we want to do is start to add some shadows kind of behind this other board. So we're going to go to this even darker color and we're going to start putting shadows below this more pinkish behind board on this side. So anywhere underneath these boards, we're just going to keep adding extra shadows here. like so. And it's little stuff like that ca that can kind of make it a huge difference, really. We we'll want to make sure that we remember to put them in here. And right here. As well as these corners over here. And then one pixel on this side. One pixel on that side. Great. So now we get to do the fun part, but before we do that, I highly recommend saving this out. And we're gonna call this White Lattice Base. Just like that. So this, the benefit of doing this is you actually can copy it by hitting Y and move it down. And the cool thing about doing that is you'll be able to have one without anything on it. But you can duplicate this as many times as you want and have different leaf patterns, put different flowers on it, maybe have different colors of the flowers. So definitely save this version as an original. You do not want to just put your decorations on them and have to do the latticing all over again. So we're going to go into the second one and change the design while we save our first one. And we are going to start adding some blue bases to our flowers. So we're gonna use the darkest blue we have and we're gonna actually make our pen tool a little bit bigger to work with. And let's just go from about, you know, we'll go one or two pixels up here, maybe about here-ish, and they can kind of be wherever you want them to be. But for the sake of just making it a little easier on ourselves, we'll put it right about, we'll put it right about here. And we're gonna go over so it's three wide and then just kind of, you know, it doesn't have to have a rhyme or reason to it. I'm just gonna kind of place them wherever. But if you wanna follow this exact uh, way, that is completely fine too. So we're gonna go up by two. So about here. 
We'll go over and up one, over and up another one, go across two more. Uh, let's go down kind of along the board a little bit here, which is kind of fun. And we'll go down across just like that. I think that looks good and we're just gonna fill this in. So you kind of just have a blob. Obviously your blobs can be whatever shape you want. This is just the shape I'm gonna rock with for now. All right, we'll make another blob over in this corner. We'll just put it right about here maybe. Have it touching this little edge here. And we'll go over by four, up, and over, I don't know, maybe by three or so. Up and over by one, cut it up here really up to you it's just kind of this is where you can have a lot of fun with it and kind of make it your own if you wanted them in a specific area totally up to you and it's it's just fun to experiment with too and see what you like there we go we'll make another blob up here i'm gonna just probably let's just put it right about here go down and across by maybe three up another one We'll go up again, again over here, maybe over and up one. We'll kind of fill in this green spot over here. And don't stress about covering your hard work, because again, we did save that nice lattice design. So we actually have it as a backup, and we'll fill this in. And that's the beautiful thing about this, is you can use that lattice design over and over. You can change the color of the boards really easily. All right, how about we go... I think right about here would be fun. So we'll go here and down, in, down, in, in, down, in, down. We'll go across four, maybe up, maybe go up six this time to be a little different. Make it really long. Go over up. We'll make this one pretty close to the top just to give ourselves a little bit more variety in the shapes here. Over. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. We'll just fill this one in. Awesome. Great. And now we have some beautiful blue blobs and they're looking pretty cute actually. So next what we're gonna do is make some, what I like to call uh, the mid shapes cause they're kind of in between. They're not the purpley ones. We're gonna use this. We have the purple mid color and the blue mid color. We're gonna use the blue mid color for this. And kind of in any of these corners, we're gonna basically go make these little kind of plus signs. So we're gonna go down here and it'll be four tall. And then from here, we're just gonna kind of stick out by one. So see how it's kind of a little plus sign, but it looks very rounded on the shape itself. So we're gonna want stuff like that. So we're gonna have one right here, Maybe like this, out, and it can stick out from your blue. The blue is just a shadow, so don't be afraid to have it come out from your original shape. This is not to fill in your current shape. This is just to kind of cover it up, if anything else. So we're gonna go up. They can be touching the other ones, that's totally fine. We'll put one maybe right about here. A little plus sign there. And we'll actually have a couple that are just like smooshed up against each other. I think that'll be kind of fun. So I'll have one right here, have it stick out, and push it up here. All right, let's move on to the next hydrangea. We'll put it right here, right along this edge, and down, up, up, put one right here, kind of have it touching. Little plus signs everywhere. And like so. So see how they kind of come out and pop off? They're kind of cute that way. And we're gonna do something a little bit different for this one since we have a little less room. We're gonna go with this one and we're gonna make it a little bit shorter. So we'll go one, two, three, four like we originally did, but we'll put the other two so it's kind of flattened a little bit and it kind of looks like it's going down instead. We'll go back to our bigger brush across here. One, two, three, up, down. We'll even attach them over here too. So we'll have it go about here. And they can fill in, that's totally fine. We're gonna add more coloring and all that stuff on top of these afterwards, so. And let's go back to our smaller brush. We're gonna do what we did earlier and let's have it go one, two, 
one, two, three, four, and one, two. We'll put another one going this way. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. And why don't we even just fill this in? Because we're going to make these a little bit varied throughout. And I think that'll be kind of fun to have one that's more highlighted. Last little flower. So let's go right here. One, two. Make our plus sign. Make our plus sign over here as well. Right about here. That's kind of fun. We'll do a short one here. Let's go back to our smaller brush, just because we had a really bloppy, a uh, really blotchy one earlier. And another short one, but going the other way. Three, four, over, over, little mini plus sign, just like that. So we have a nice variety of kind of blobs here. I would even say it'd be kind of fun to attach this one here as well. Lots of blotchiness. So the next thing we're gonna do is use our highlight color and this is gonna be really fun too. So this is where you'll definitely start to notice they look a little bit more like flowers. So on the top left of all of these blobs we're gonna make these little shapes like this and just kind of have them empty for now. We might fill them in afterward, but we want to see what the texture looks like first. So anywhere that there's kind of like, just some space, like that. Oh, that one made a really nice shape right here. That's obviously the, the that's the ideal shape is we want these little kind of diamonds. Obviously if they're up against here, we might have to put some leaves or something to make sure it keeps that. We'll put one right here too, little diamond shape. And sometimes you can even add little filler ones over here if you wanted to. Maybe another one right here. All right, we'll move on to this one. Put it in the top left corner. Little diamond shape here. These are so much fun to make. And we'll put it right here. Like so. This one's gonna be fun. It's gonna be full of those little diamond shapes because it's so blotchy. So we'll go here, up, and then we'll go, we'll add two more down here. And we'll put one right here. And one over here. Don't worry if they look a little too zigzaggy right now. We're gonna go in and adjust a few of those as well. Maybe stick a few extras around so they kind of swirl around the design. And we'll put them on here too. Another one right here, like that spot right here too just for some texture all right i think that looks pretty good don't worry about again what they look like in this blended mode where we are going to experiment and try out a few more things but now we get to use what i call the hydrangea filler basically anywhere there's a little too much dark blue on the bottoms just just fill that in so we'll put it like about here on the insides um, if it clumps up like in this corner or over here maybe it doesn't have to be like an exact placement just put it wherever it needs a little bit of color maybe use it to kind of break up some of these designs too if you need them so we'll put some right here maybe along this corner and maybe around these two dots too, just to break up the colors a little bit. Try to make a few more of these shapes proper. And even on the inside of a couple of these, if you notice that they're not connecting, you can always put a little purple on the outside and it'll help kind of make that flower shape. Right here. And right here see how that fills out the color nice and we're gonna need one right over here as well heck we can even put some down here too 
like that. We'll break up this blue a little bit so it just feels like it's a little more broken. That's pretty fun. I think we could benefit from having nice dark blue in this corner though. Like that. And then we'll fill some purple in right on that corner there. Anywhere, like I said, anywhere that you feel like looks a little awkward, just kind of put some stuff. If you have like, see how this corner on that spot is kind of bleeding out? You can always put a darker color outside there and it'll kind of close it off more properly. And we can break that up with our light purple as well. Put the dark blue on top again and break it up with our with our purpley color. Awesome. That looks great. I'm really quite happy with that. I think I'll get rid of this one and oh, we'll leave it there. I kind of like it spilling into the other one. And maybe close this diamond off a little bit more like that. Maybe make an extra diamond up here or a couple extra spots. Like that. That's cute. Figure out what you like. The pixel art definitely always looks better than the, you know, solid art, but the thing with Animal Crossing is it's very forgiving from far away, so. Next up, we are going to be adding a leaf base. So this is gonna be where we start to go into our green colors. So we're gonna pick this darker green. It's not as dark as our background, but it's definitely darker. And just from this bottom over here, this bottom corner, we're gonna go one, two down, and then from one over one, two, three down, and then we're gonna connect it all the way up top again. Go up from here, three, four, five, six, and then we're gonna go one down here, so it's kind of drooping. And then we need to close off the shape, so we're just going to have it close probably about, let's, let's connect it right there. So you can kind of see it's kind of like melting the leaf over. We're also going to add a leaf covering this little bit right here. So we're going to go up by two, in by two, and fill that little square. And then up and over by two like that. And don't worry if they look really flat, we're going to be adding the textures and colors and highlights on top after. So next we're going to go one, two, three, four from the top of this right here. And we'll color in one, two, just like that on top of that one. Then underneath that, we can go all the way across till we're one past. And we'll do one more pass over here too to connect it to this side. And from this outside one, we'll go one, two, three down and just fill in this little area right here. And then to make it look like the leaf is drooping, we'll add one little pixel going that way too. On this side, we'll fill it in so the leaves are also coming out of here. From right below where this little flower is, we can go here, one, two, over, one, two, three. One, two, one, one. Just like that. On this side, we'll, we'll kind of have it coming over from the side here. So from this dark blue pixel, one, two, three, four. Going one over from that and one down, one, two, three, four. And on the inside, we're gonna do one, two, three. Just kind of filling in those dark pixels that were there. Now from this little corner right here, one, two, one, two. And if your leaves aren't exactly the same as mine, that is 100% okay. This is another spot where you can kind of experiment with and have a lot of fun with it. If you want your leaves sticking upward or going sideways, that is super fine. Um, if anything, it adds a lot of variety to them. So. so from this corner right here, we're gonna go one, two, over, down, one, two, over, down, one, two, three, inward down and inward one two three four five across one two down but we'll go back up one two three just like that i'm kind of having all of my leaves droop down i just think it feels hydrangeas have like these kind of cute heart shaped leaves a little bit so i'm trying to keep it similar to how they actually are in real life but this is a video game they don't have to match real life at all if you don't want them to we'll have it come in like this and we'll just go probably down to here so it goes straight across and we'll have it droop right there those are some pretty cute leaves i think this one's a little too tall so i'm gonna go in and i'm just gonna fill back in my board that i had here just like that yeah i think that looks really cute Okay, so here's the fun part where we get to start shading these leaves. 
So let's go with our highlight color first. I feel like that'll be a little bit easier and we're just gonna find a couple spots like this middle point here, right along the edge along here would be really nice. So from this point and then going up, maybe one, two, three, four, five. I think that's kind of nice. And you know what? I think I wanna trim this leaf in a little bit so the highlight kind of curves more. I like that actually, that looks nice. So going back to our highlight color, Let's color pick it. From the top here, we're gonna go one, two, just along the top right edge. And over here, we'll do it on the bottom left edge. Hydrangeas kind of have lighter on the outside of their leaves and they kind of go from dark to light, like almost like a gradient. So that's kind of the inspiration behind making the highlights on the outside bits, not necessarily like in any way that might be logical light wise but more logical plant wise but again you really don't need logic it is a video game so you can, <laughs> you can really do whatever you want there i like that i think those look really good for the highlights so far one more highlight we need to add we'll put it back up there is right here i'm gonna leave the tip the darker color and i'm gonna just put it like this because i think it would be more fun so now we'll use this mid-tone and we'll kind of fill in all the random fun spots. I'm going to leave the darker color on the inside so that's like the flowers are casting a shadow. But kind of anywhere in between that's not like touching the bottom, that's where I'm going to start filling in my leaves. So from here, we don't want to have it up against the flower, so we'll leave those pixels. And we'll just kind of fill in this little area right here. Like that. We'll put some on the edges right here. And on these edges here, maybe a pixel right here, even right here maybe. That's kind of nice, isn't it? And then we'll put some just on the edges. We'll make a little Tetris block shape here. Go one, two, three, four. Since this one is touching the flower, we'll bring this back to a darker green. And one, two, we'll just zigzag ourselves all the way down here like that. And we'll put one pixel right here as well. So this is looking really good, but it seems like the flowers are a little bit disconnected. And I think a way to kind of fix this is to add a couple of extra leaves behind the lattice itself. So it's great to have the, like these cute little flowers, but I think just adding a couple more leaves along the edges would do us really, really well. So we're going to go along some of these edges here, like this one, and we'll just go up by two with our dark ish green or dark leaf green one two and over and with the non-highlight color because these are going to be set in the back we're going to kind of trace the outline of this right here and just like that we can fill this one in with a darker one too we'll go over to this side here and kind of color in these go one here two three we'll take our lighter color and it's okay if they kind of um, bump into the other leaves, it just makes it look a little bit more full, especially with these white lines here that'll break it up. We'll take our darker color here and just kind of fill in this little corner. And we'll f this one's kind of empty, so we'll give this one a little bit of love too. Right up to about here and just along the outside. Like that, I think that's pretty good. We'll add one extra pixel right about here. And you know what, let's let's kind of just add a little bit more of a texture here by going like that. Great, so that's nice and filled out. And let's go check out what that looks like. We'll name it White Lattice Hydrangea. I can't fit Hydrangea, so we're just gonna leave it as Hydran. <laughs> and I think the best way to do this is to see what it looks like on a panel. All right, so this is what they look like on panels. Um, they are really nice looking so far. You might notice like a tiny, tiny bit of a cut line where it duplicates. And this happens pretty much with any design you make, especially when they have diagonals. There is a way to kind of make this a little less obvious and we're gonna just go ahead and fix that really quickly. So the way to do this is generally, whenever you have a split area, you want to try to not have tiny pixels like bunched together so if you look down here see how there's only two of these colors right here and then there's nothing really above it that is probably the main cause for that split when it when it duplicates up so we're gonna just take our tool and we will just move our design up by two the triangle bits that are down here are more so closely cut in half 
than they were before when they just had one. You might see that over here, but since this is on the very edge, the tiny corner edge isn't going to matter unless you were making like a floor pattern. So let's see how that looks in compared to what it was originally. And I don't think it'll be perfect, but it will be definitely a lot better. Yeah, so you can kind of see it blends a lot cleaner than the original one. Um, especially on the whiteboards where the gray shadows are connecting. So this this panel we haven't actually changed, but the hydrangea one we did. Let's try it on the white lattice without the hydrangea as well to see if that kind of cleans that design up. All right, so we're going to take this and move it again up by two. Hit OK. And you can definitely tell the difference with how many pixels are on each edge there. There we go. It looks a lot better. Obviously, there's a tiny, tiny pixel difference in the corner, but uh, compared to what it originally looked like, this is so much cleaner and you can always do that because you made them tileable after the fact you don't have to do that right away if it's easier to design it this way. That's why we do that kind of scrolling trick and you can kind of see it nice and easy that way as well. But yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. It, it took a little while to get the design right, but I think it came out really cute. And obviously you can put whatever flowers you want. If you guys have suggestions for types of flowers to put in combination with this design, I would love to hear about it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys make a lot of fun lattice fences. And if making them is not something that you're interested in doing at all, I will be putting my creator code with these designs in the description. You can just find it through there. But yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you on the next one. Bye! Balloon. 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 I can't get it. It's over the water. <laughs>